What I have is my personal knowledge and opinion. Only law is universe. Hey, I'm Shay, and this is... Hey, Shay. Come talk to me. Hey. Swavy. Alrighty, man. I'm back for a second go around. <laughs> so this will be episode two. Episode dos. This discussion, this topic for today, what we will be discussing for today is avoiding pain. <laughs> to be honest with you, I wrote this down. Um, <laughs> I wrote this down a while ago, but um, looking at my list of topics just over time of things that I wanted to talk about. When I saw that one, I wasn't ready to talk about it. I'm telling you now, I, I wasn't ready to talk about it. I'm not ready to talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it. And this is a perfect example. <laughs> Avoiding pain. Your ideal of pain can be physical, mental, emotional, psychological. <laughs> Look, however you want to put it, whatever you um, or however you identify with the pain. Hmm. This is something I tell people, right? I would be more hurt by something that you do to me that fucks with my mental because that's really the strong suit. That's the strong point. Now, I'm not saying this to say my flesh is weak, but every flesh is really weak. Hmm? Hmm? Hello? Oh, I thought you said something. Every flesh <laughs> is really weak. Um, we can bench all we want to. <laughs> we can uh, do all the sit-ups, the squats, the leg lifts, all that working out you want to do. I'm not saying don't work out, girl, because, baby, I'm trying to get right. You feel me? But uh, what I'm saying is physical pain is very small. But that emotional pain, that, that mental fuck, whoo, whole different ball game. And... <clears throat> Also, this goes into what I'm about to go into. And now thinking about this in this moment, I made a video. If you have not seen this video, you can go check it out. It says, I've, I'm have i almost 30 and I've never been in a real relationship, which still holds true to this day, uh, which the video was only a couple months ago. But go watch it, as well as my other videos, if you would like to. But... That makes me now think because I just sat down actually maybe two nights ago and I wrote down every person that I've dealt with. Um, this is not sexually. Um, they were in there too, but I'm saying this is not sexually. This is just every person that I've dealt with that has had some type of impact on my life. And... The three things was experience, impact, and then the lesson that I learned. Which, impact and the lesson, I mean, kind of ties into like one and the same. But, I wrote every person's name down first. Then I went back and I took my time on each name and thought about the experience that I had with this person. The energy that they brought in. And just some of the things we went through, talked about, whatever it is that I could remember that popped up in my brain when I, you know, looked at this person's name or thought about them. Now, I didn't do friends or family. I only deal with people that I dealt with on a level of emotion um, that was deeper than just the 
the family and friends. I'm not saying you can't have deep connections with your family and friends. You most definitely should. But what I'm saying is these people who kind of, some of them played as family members. You know what I'm saying? People who I could be very vulnerable with. And so I took that time and just went through that. And when I got finished, as a matter of fact, what's so funny is after the first person, the first person's the only person that I was actually able <laughs> to just start thinking about the experiences and going through those. Because after that first person, I literally had the lesson for everybody else. I, I, I was sitting in the dark for a moment just thinking, listening to me, some some positive vibrations, you know what I'm saying, some positive um frequencies you should check that out if you watch episode one you'll know what your homework assignment is but I took my time and just sat there and vibe but after that first person they just start rolling for every other person I was able to put down my lesson it was just coming out coming out coming out and I always wanted to do that because even with the things when it comes to music that I'm wanting to do, um, I've always wanted to be more emotional, be more vulnerable, express my feelings more. But that was always something that was kind of hard for me to do because, for one, it's not really as, as I'm not as sensitive as I used to be, but I was the only child on my mother's side. Yeah, I kicked it with my, my family members and stuff like that. Uh, the kids that my father had, I wasn't around them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to them, for sure. You know what I mean? But I wasn't around my brothers and sisters growing up. So, it was really just me, my mother, pretty much. Um, and of course, with her, she had me when she was young, so she knew what she knew. She can only tell me what she know. And she's also still trying to live and move and maneuver and have fun, enjoy her life. But I was suppressing so much of my feelings if I did cry, right? It was, you you weak, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> it don't take nothing to make you cry, right? But you act so hard, right? So even the people now, uh, well, people, people prior to me coming into myself, they would always tell me, you, you really soft, but you really act so hard. Funny thing is, I felt like, like as I started to get older, it's like it's not an act, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But as I started to really learn myself more, it was, it was an act. It was a, it was a, it was a front. Not to say that I'm, I'm not strong. Like I don't have strength. I'm not saying that. But in some cases, it was me having to be stronger than I wanted to be or needed to be in the moment, because that's what I was used to. Having my guard up, which also is probably part of the reason why I chose some of the people that I chose um, when it comes to dealing with people in general. But I always dealt with these people at arm's length, you know? Really extend that arm a little bit more. <laughs> I would play games. I'm, I'm, I'm that mental mind fucker. You feel me? That's that's what I used to pride myself on. Being able to mentally fuck you. Mentally have sex with your brain. Yes, that was me. I then got to a point where I understood that I if I wanted something real, if I wanted something realistic, if I wanted to be myself, if I wanted to have someone be themselves with me, then I had to open up. And for me, opening up meant that I had to, because 
See, I would honestly express how I feel, but with limitations. And of course, you still can't just go off the deep end now when you say things to people. But I was more of, you can call it sugarcoating. I was I was the slick slash slick with it. You feel me? Not to say that there was there, there was truth in, in my slickness. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I was more of that person where you know I'm, I'm a finesse finagle falu 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 my way up in that thing. That was me. But it becomes a point a point where you have to be vulnerable. So I, I did that. I attempted to. I was still learning. So I, I went on a limb and decided to ask someone for the first time, can we be in a relationship? And that was great for me, you know. Though it didn't turn out as, as great as I wish it would have at the time, but that was a starting point for me. And now knowing how this works, when I say this, I mean the world um, how we are supposed to elevate and advance. <laughs> Before knowing that, I was a person who, when I end up getting something that was good to me, why I felt like I could be vulnerable, now that I'm finally ready to be vulnerable, I was overgiving. I went from... <laughs> <laughs> not giving it all because I tell people I had to learn how to give a fuck. Like I had to learn how to care because I didn't care. I didn't care about nobody else's feelings. I only cared about mine. I was selfish. I was selfish. And in my selfishness, there was still a bit of me not being selfish. But it was only... It it was covered up really by so much of selfishness that you couldn't see me trying. You know what I mean. So with that, when I did finally decide to be vulnerable, it was like I said, over overindulging, and that's that's kind of what what. What I did was overindulge. So to pacify my pain in my life, I tried to avoid my pain by either heavy drinking, heavy smoking, treating people like they don't really mean much to me, or giving too much to people who I know didn't really vibe with me like that. So for me, now in my life, I understand that uh, there's a balance in everything. Like everything has to be balanced. You should do everything in moderation. Overindulging is, of course, horrible. And also another thing that I I realized too, just to speak um, from being what I consider as a spiritual person, not so religious, there's a lot of things that you've been taught that you just didn't know how to utilize and didn't know how to how to move and 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 articulate and calculate and and use when necessary, you know. That's probably gonna be another video because I just had that discussion with my grandmother the other day. But yeah, this is those are different ways that I decided though, like I said, to deal with my pain, to avoid the pain. But it, as you can hear, where it stemmed from, it's not an excuse. This is just part of my growth. Just something that I had to experience. To the people that was around along the way, who had to be a part of my ascension, part of me elevating and rising up, thank you, one, for tolerating me. Thank you for the people who still loved me the people who still loved me unconditionally because I I, I gave off some negative energy to some people who still try their best to care, to love, to give, you know. So shout out to y'all because 
On the flip side, I, I can I can see how how detrimental <laughs> that can be, man. To care about somebody who one don't care about themselves, two who cares about nothing really. That goes back to if you watch episode one, going on autopilot, suppressing pain. It's never a way to deal with it. You have to acknowledge that, for one, you're suppressing the pain, but you have to know yourself in order to be consciously aware that you are doing this. That requires you to take time to yourself, sit back, evaluate who you are, what you are, what's around you, what are you doing, what you have been doing, what habits do you have, what are some things that you've been doing for the last 10 years that you can write down that you don't want to do? Or <clears throat> that you see that people even see as a problem? That's, that's, that's heavy. And a lot of times it's hard to deal with. It's hard to look at yourself and be like, ooh, that's a flaw. Especially if you're someone who suppresses a lot you know <clears throat> when you start to see a flaw it becomes like anxiety oh i gotta take it as how, how can i how how how, how blah, 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 blah. that's another thing anxiety will run you through the roof straight through the roof but suppressing the pain this is not how you're going to deal with it so just to kind of get into real quick, just real quick, what did transpire and how I did kind of get better was, like I said, I had to, one, take that initiative to say, hey, I need to be more vulnerable. Hey, I need to do better. Hey, I want better. Hey, you need to get right. Hey, 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 hey. You have to check yourself, you know. And once you check yourself, you got to then just be willing to roll with the punches because it's going to get heavy. But I came out of it. Let's see, when did I ask? 2016? Yeah, 16. It's only, <laughs> it's only three years ago, bro. Exactly. And I'm in a totally different space. Have I had some situations where I still have chosen, chose um, to deal with people who was not a vibe? Yes, I have. Now am I going to deal with somebody who's not a vibe? I cannot do that. <laughs> if I don't feel it, I don't feel it. I used to tell people this and they thought it was a game. But in all honesty, me looking at it in hindsight, I was actually... In some cases, not avoiding pain for myself, but avoiding pain for others because I wasn't ready. And I didn't want to take people through what I knew people go, go through when dealing with me, which is, I'm going to bring this good energy to you. And then when you start to get attached, I got to go. Or if I don't have to go, you got to chill out, <laughs> you know, and it's that thing. And I also realized that it's not just me running away from pain. I also realized, though, because a lot of people, once again, a lot of people don't want to recognize their own troubles. And I started to understand why when I do talk to people, why is it immediately you all of a sudden feel like you want to be in a relationship with me, you know? And I had to understand that I actually had good energy. I did. When I was myself, when I was in, in, in that zone, I had great energy. Great energy. When you just sit and have a conversation with me, dope. I'm dope, bro. I be cooling. I be fabbing like a mug. We good money. We good energy. But people have attachments just like I did, to things that were good. People who were giving off that good energy. I wanted to latch on to it, though. Once again, 
they weren't good for me. You might have good energy, but that does not mean that you're good for me, right? And that's just the way it is, you know? It is. It is like that. It's just like that. Not everybody that has good energy, you're going to want to be around for a long period of time. And anybody who vibrated at a high frequency can tell you this. You'll be around other people who, who got good energy, but after a while, like, it's time to detach. You got to go in your cocoon. They got to go in their cocoon, you know? Got to go back in and in, in come back out even better, you know? Everybody needs that time to themselves. Everybody needs that break. And that was another thing, too. That's that. No, that's pretty much the same thing. What I'm going to speak of actually is um, holding on to other people who are good or have that good energy. You start to drain them if you don't also have good energy to match their energy. And you just come to them for the good energy. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so just learn how to raise your vibration so you're not toxic to other people. And also... Don't get attached to people just because they have good energy. Don't do that. Most definitely don't do that. But what I want to say to top this off is to make sure that for one, you are in tune with yourself. Consciously consciously aware of where you are, who you are, what you're doing. So that you know when you're harboring pain. Also take time to sit and write these things out or just take time to sit, think about it fully. Think about the first time you felt pain. The first time you felt this certain feeling that you feel that you carry with you. And as soon as you get to the root, you be able to pull it up. You can't pull up a whole tree if you just start at the at the branch. Like <laughs> you have to go to the root. You feel me? No, I'ma just saw it in half. How they do? You know what I'm saying? Then just leave the stump. <laughs> no, you want new growth. New growth. So that's kind of where I'ma leave it at, man. Just get to the root of the issue. You don't avoid it. Avoiding it, you're just going to keep running. And nobody wants to keep running, especially with no destination. Be like Kevin and say, I don't get tired. <laughs> Listen to Kevin now. Kevin lets you know he gets tired. <laughs> It's not to say you're weak because you get tired. We get tired, bro. Don't suppress that. Handle your business. And on that note, y'all be easy. <laughs>